Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this another brand new day. It is Saturday, the 31st of July, I believe it is. Thumbs up for that. I mean, I know it's Saturday, and yesterday would have been the 30th, and second is Monday, so yeah, well, whatever. Anyway, thumbs up. I'm starting things late. It's 7.30. Usually I start recording at 7 o'clock. I'm a little bit more tired today, apparently. Such is life. It happens. I'm alive, and that's a good thing. Hopefully, if you're watching, you're alive and metabolizing as well. So, yay. <laughs> Couple things I want to talk about. First thing, I just want to mention this part. I... I do my channel for my mental health, and my mental health, you know, has been for a lot of things, you know, recovering from the death of my wife, and recovering from the depression that has gripped most of my life, but my mental health, like anybody else's, is a lot of things. Sometimes that requires me to talk about the hamsters, you know, because I still have a little hamster, and he's sleeping right now. He's asleep during the morning time and during the day sometimes if I get up early enough he's awake you know and he'll get up and he'll do stuff while I'm here and doing things because he'll start drinking or just he'll wander over and do some stuff and then he'll go back to bed and then go to sleep so it's he's just that's why I don't show my little guy, but he is here. But sometimes said my mental health requires me to talk about my hamster and things like that. And other times it's talking about my kitty cat. And sometimes it's talking about games or cosmic horror. It's a lot of things. And so I don't want to just focus in and fixate on one specific thing that happens or what I'm discovering about me because my mental health is a lot of things, not just one thing. So fixating on one thing is something that I do because of ADHD and all that. We're really good at hyper fixating for, you know, the lengths of time. When I was younger, I could hyper fixate for quite some time. These days, I can hyper fixate for well, usually like long enough to play a video game for a couple hours and then I've lost it and I get bored so it happens but it's a lot of things so I don't just want to talk about one thing all the time but leading up into all that one thing I'm going to talk about is there are reasons why I have difficulties right now trying to express what I'm discovering in my life and where I am in my life and such like that. If you watch my videos on this, even up to yesterday, you can watch me dancing around the subject, trying hard not to say what I'm trying to say, using every word but the words that need to be said. And there's reasons for that and one of the reasons is simply because of the way I was reacting is one of the reasons I'm dancing around the subject and afraid to, to take on labels in some degrees and that is this American culture has slowly been changing but from the 80s on I mean American culture has never been good on this subject it, so the poor and the different are really demonized. I mean, I can remember watching TV shows as a kid where, you know, gay people and such were dis not described, but shown as something that is shameful to be laughed at. Things were starting to change even then. You could see little spots where even culture was starting to push back against that. But 99% of that was, these are disgraceful, laughable people, and it was always punched down. That has slowly been changing in some ways. We don't punch down as hard depending on who you are. Some things are changing quickly, some things are changing way too slowly. 
But we do not treat in American culture the poor well, which is weird because most people in the United States qualify as poor. And if you take a look at American culture, yeah, it, we demonize the poor as untrustworthy, bad people. We demonize the different, those that are, you know, whether you're different because of your gender or your ethnic background or you have, I mean, take a look at how any mental illness or how the aneurotypical are depicted in American culture. Most of it, 99%, is not good. And while things are changing, slowly take a look at just what happened to the one Olympic gymnast who had to pull out of everything because of her mental health and the alt-right reactionary on TV and on the internet went insane, tearing her apart just because of that, depicting her as weak. These middle-aged white men who have never done anything more athletic than, you know, chase after whatever illegal substance they spend their riches on, calling an Olympic-level athlete weak. So... Things aren't good in American culture. So I dance around a lot of the subjects, and one of those is being a neurotypical. And there's a couple terms, and one of them I really don't like, because it doesn't matter what the intent of a word may be, it doesn't matter who the people are that may use a word, it's how you feel when you hear that word. And when I see this word, you know, there's neurotypical and then there's the neurodivergent. Neurodivergent gives me <clears throat> strong eugenics vibes. So I'm one of those that if, if pressed, I'll use non-neurotypical, but I much prefer the term a-neurotypical, which just means you are non-neurotypical. I had to accept that back when I finally decided to accept the fact that, yes, if you are depressed, especially if, like me, it's biochemical, lifelong, you know, it's built into your DNA that way, you are a neurotypical. And it was because of that that I was able to open up my eyes to admit to other things and was able to accept that I had ADHD and I have had severe ADHD my whole life. That is what finally allowed me to open up my eyes entirely and take a look at it and yeah, it. even now, I can feel my brain clamping down to say no, no, say something else, don't do that. Where yeah, I am on the autism spectrum. I don't know where, but I am, and while it's a part of who I am, obviously, and I can look back on my life and I can tell at each point, you know, taking away the, the lenses of I was a bad person to realize, no, this was not, and then looking back at my life, I can point to go, yeah, this was because of this, this was because of this, this was because of this, this was because of this. I mean, parts of it, I can remember being in middle school and such when, well, I can't remember the exact time because Dungeons and Dragons first was published in like 1974, and I was one of the first time players, but not one of the original book players. Things had already started to change, so it was right around 75, 76. I was starting to withdraw just from people and such. I discovered I like to deal with being a dungeon master and inventing stuff without actually running the game, just dealing with the stuff and imagining, not actually being with people. And as I got older, I just withdrew more and more and more. So I can point to various parts of my life. Now that is 
a bunch of different symptoms of a lot of different things, my withdrawing that I can't even say that it is naturally a part of this or this or this because everybody has their own biology, everybody is different, and even if I weren't on the spectrum, even if I didn't have ADHD, even if I weren't depressed, it may be that I still would have been slowly withdrawing as I have been. That could be its own thing. We don't know. Who knows? So, that's why I don't talk about it a lot because of I grew up in a culture that demonizes the different and the aneurotypical. So, I am afraid simply because of that stuff that's still in my head to say it. And also because I see the culture that I live in and how people that are on the spectrum and are mildly or severely affected are depicted and treated in popular American culture. So, part of it is just fear. But yeah, I'm, I admit it to myself. I'm talking about it in my videos because it's, it's a part of me, and it's who I am. It's not a symptom. I'm not neurodivergent in the eugenics fashion. I'm not, you know, a diagnosis or this. I'm just a person. I'm not broken per se. I've, I'm turning 59 this year, and I'm still alive. So obviously, in the terms of, you know, am I broken as a person? You know, maybe my personality, but that's a lot of things have happened. But I've been a sewer rat my whole life. You know, life has tried hard to kill me and I'm still here. So I may be broken, but I'm not broken. I'm just a facet of human differences and personalities. And we're all on a spectrum of some kind for something in some way there is no direct people are this way people are this way people are this way our entire world is built up of billions of individuals even the worst of us are still just examples of human beings being human beings we're all just shades of gray different from each other. There's no flipping a switch. Of course, when you look at things that the extremes from, you know, Mr. Rogers to the worst of the genocidal, yeah, there's a flipped switch, but I'm talking about the entirety of everything. To go from the ultra good to the ultra bad, you have to go through a lot of shades of gray. And so by the time you get there, it's not just a switch to flip or even a flipped switch. <laughs> so that's why I want to talk about the things that I want to talk about and I'll talk about my journey of self-discovery on discovering where I am on the autism spectrum. And But I don't want it to be the end all and be all. I'm not an autism channel. I'm not a depression channel. I'm not an ADHD channel. ADHD channel. I'm not any one of these things. I'm a variety channel because it's all for my mental health and everything is a facet of that. That's why I, I like I've said, I do gaming videos not because there is any great demand out there <clears throat> for people, for me to do these things, but because it helps provide form and structure to an otherwise formless and structureless life and we all need meaning and we all need purpose. I choose mine. Thumbs up for that. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab and I'm going to go through and thank however many people up to 25 that have left me comments. Yay! Thumbs up and thank you if you have and if you haven't then, you know, thumbs up and thank you for watching. And if you're not watching, well, you're, you're not seeing this. 
If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and even though I count an American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibromyalgia, ADHD, and so much more, uh, my memory is getting better all the time. It's also going to hit a functional limit one day, so... Uh, we have Dr. Trouts, T-R-A-U-T-S, thumbs up and thank you, and I will do what I can. Ice Damon, thumbs up and thank you. Always good to see you in the comments. Meng Zhang, I'm nowhere close, but thank you so very, very much. We have Confused Owl 29 it is good to see you in the comments. And uh, examine everything. The life unexamined is not worth living, and part of the journey of that is finding out where you are and who you are. And we have Tomacat, thumbs up and thank you. Alistar Bill Clear, greatly appreciated. It's Youngblood, I sure hope I'm close to the pronunciation, thumbs up. Grace Skips, ASMR. Uh, it's a, I honestly don't know. So uh, Arthur, thumbs up and thank you. We have Johnny K, greatly appreciated and not a problem. AJR4363269, thumbs up. We have Scrappy, greatly appreciated. Colin Reisenauer, thumbs up and thank you. KR, thumbs up. No cool dudes. Well, there are some cool dudes out there. I mean, you never know. There's Alexi D E V U Y S T, thumbs up and thank you. Just Rob, greatly appreciated. And good to see you. We have Hunter, thumbs up and thank you. And that is it. So, thumbs up. Thank you all so very, very much. Oops, itchy nose. You get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. And that's a good thing, if only in text. It's I have social anxieties, but I still like to communicate and talk with people, so it's good to do so. Thank you very, very much, each and every one of you. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. If you could check out my various links down below as well, I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com, and if you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. It is because of these people, and hopefully I'm able to update this list soon. I'm so sorry, I'm so late on that. But it is because of these people I'm able to eat and pay my rent and get pain medication. So thank each and every one of you. Now, do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them on the bank of my heart where I draw interest. Thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Thank you very, very much. Thumbs up as well. So, for all the rest of this, because the... Gamma and Delta variants are burning and burning out there and everything is just going south everywhere again with this whole pandemic thing. Please, for your health, for the health of others who can't vax up or such like that, because there are some, vax up and get masked if you can. Please, we got to get through this and the fewer people that we lose, the better. So if you go out, maintain your social distancing, wear a mask, wash your hands, try not to touch your face, get vaxxed if you can. We gotta get through this, we gotta get through this. So you take care, have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is, well, quite frankly, a very good thing.